Hey guys, today is the third video in our series going over the 2-3-1 formation. And today we're gonna to talk about finishing in the final third of the field. So let's go. So if anybody missed the first two videos in this series, I'll go ahead and link that. Uh, this is the third video going over our 2-3-1 formation and we're specifically talking about how to finish in the final third. The first video was on building out of the back. The second video was on midfield transition. And now how do we score out of the 2-3-1 at 7v7? So here we are set up in our 2-3-1. Two center backs, we have uh, three midfielders, our center midfielder, and then these are either full backs or outside midfielders, and we have our striker. As you guys know with the other videos, I like to think about attacking and finishing the same way I do building out of the back and midfield transition in terms of where we are in the field. So are we either wide or are we central? Because that's how we decide tactically what to do when we're on the field. So what we're gonna do is just start from the back and we are gonna just say that as we build out of the back here, we run into a little bit of an unor unorganized press where we just kind of have three runners, let's say. As we build out of the back, our fullback should be coming down to support, our goalkeeper should be coming over to support, the center back and the fullback on the opposite side of the field need to come over, and our nine, our striker, needs to start shading over. So this is in general what it should look like as we start building. So here, the best option really becomes the fullback, and as always, Whenever there's space in front of our player and they have the ball, we are going to encourage them to drive forward. So that's what he's going to do. And as he drives forward, we have guys who will be coming and the support that the fullback on that side needs to have is from our center back. Our center midfielder needs to come with and you want to stay around the level of the ball. The striker needs to stay high and our fullback and our center back on the opposite side cinch over. As the fullback with the ball down the wide area drives forward, eventually what's going to happen is they're going to become engaged. Now that may be from trailers, people who they've gone behind and are coming this way, or it may be by the center back here. Either way, and we'll just say it's the center back here, the first look that any player in the wide area has to give once they are engaged is centrally. So if the ball's wide, once you become engaged, the first look is to the center of the field. And that typically Typically is either the six, the center midfielder who's come over, or in this situation, clearly the most dangerous ball is to go central to the nine. Once your team has become more advanced or if they're just a higher level 7v7 team, the second look, so let's say that this scenario comes, we're still in the wide area, we've brought the ball down and through here, we're getting into our final attacking third, and let's say we're tracked down by the fullback on this side who's kind of come in here, and the center back's more over here. So now there really isn't a fantastic central option all right there's always the option to come back um, which which we'll talk about in a second but the the other really dangerous option here and this is something you have to teach in training is to play a ball into this area for the nine to go run after and that's a, that's teaching triggers and in young kids that can be really difficult but if you can get it in training and the team's good enough if this central option is closed off playing a ball into this area for the nine to go run after becomes incredibly dangerous so we talked about the first look being central. We talked about this dangerous ball being played for the nine to run after. If that is all closed, and for whatever reason you've, you've run into a team that's either recovered very quickly or they're just more organized, the, the option here, once everything is closed off, if you run into something like this, you'll see a lot of young players try to either drive into this or try to pass into this. If all the space is congested here, you have to be able to switch field. And that just means playing a ball back to our center back, who then can play it to his partner center back you can see the fullback opens up plays out here and now we're in the same situation out wide where we're driving down the opposite wide area and hopefully we've been able to make this switch faster than the defenders have recovered and now you're in you're in essentially the same exact situation coming down the wide area on the opposite side okay so just to recap as this ball is coming down the wide area I'm gonna put the ball back here with our fullback on the wide area the first look as you come down is central so if the ball is with our right fullback the first look is going to be to play it central to the nine or to the six if that's closed and there's an opportunity to play a ball dangerously into this wide area assuming it's not offsides and you can get back in between that's the second look if all of that is closed off the third look is to just switch field and our four should be coming here to support now i do want to say there is a quote unquote fourth look which i don't discourage at all depending on who i have here in the in, in the wide areas one option would be just to take this 
this guy 1v1. Because again, we're in our attacking third. So taking this guy 1v1, if you can get by him, now we're really in a spot where our runners can come and we can cross the ball. Or depending on how much time you have, maybe just take it right to goal. So that's really sort of the fourth option is if you have a player who's skilled, you want to encourage them to take take the ball 1v1 against a, an opposing fullback, especially if there's a, a mismatch in the wide areas. You just want to be careful that you don't have players who just continually run into the defenders and lose the ball here. So they have to be talented 1v1 players, and they also need to recognize a situation where it's just completely closed off and they're not just trying to go through people because young players will do that. They'll Even in a situation that is really unlikely to be successful, they'll go ahead and just go into all these people instead of trying to just find a ball back or finding a ball in. But let's go ahead and play this ball in centrally and talk about what needs to happen once this ball gets played in centrally. So once the defenders come and engage the attack on the wide area, which in this situation was our fullback, first look is central. So let's just play this ball out, right? So let's say that the nine comes over, the six is kind of closed off, and the ball does get played to our very first option centrally. This is a really important concept in strikers, especially young strikers, is what we call hold up play. So what you will see a lot is a nine will just turn and run into whoever the defenders are here. So this ball will come in here and they'll just turn right into the defender. So ideally, and again, this is an advanced concept, before they receive this ball, they're gonna check their shoulder. If the defender's coming with them, they're just gonna have to hold it up, keep their back to the defender. If the defender's not with them and they have space, ideally they would receive this ball on a half turn and go ahead and tack from here. If, the, if this guy gives them space, we absolutely want them going 1v1 or looking, looking for help, coming down this area, help down this area. But let's just say for the sake of argument, that the defenders get there and he holds it up. So now we're looking to play a ball and hold it up for our attackers. So the fullback should just continue his run. And if you can do a one-two ball or even just hold it up and play it out here wide, we're absolutely going to want to do that. That really is going to be the most desired situation here. The other possibility is that we just play it right back to the six. And then the six either switches, switches field with our center back on this side, or the six maybe has an opening and can take that ball himself into this area. Because now you're, you're really in a 2v1 situation out wide and then you can get the ball out wide here. So let's say again that the fullback had it here and played a ball centrally into our nine. Then let's say that our nine held up play, checked his shoulder, saw there were defenders here, played a ball out wide right back for our fullback who was coming. And now we're in a situation where we have a cross. And for those of you who have seen my attacking patterns videos, and I'll link that here as well, this is where we get into dedicated runs into the box. With the fullback coming, eventually they're gonna get closed off. And a lot of fullbacks, especially young fullbacks, are gonna to shoot from this angle. And you really have to teach them that this is not a good place to shoot because it's unlikely to be a goal just because of the angle. So this is a crossing situation. Every crossing situation that we run at 77, the runners go to the same spots. The nine, our striker goes near post. The center midfielder goes to the penalty spot and the fullback on the opposite side goes to the far post. Our center backs have to close space and come with the play. And as the defenders come, the, the thing you really have to teach is how do you time these runs? So we really want to make sure that they're not getting here too soon. So they don't want to don't want to show up too soon and they don't want to show up too late. And a lot of times that's just either doing some crossing in, in, in practice or, or just something they have to learn from the game. Okay, so we've talked about what happens with the first look from the outside going centrally. Now we're going to talk about this through ball, this dangerous through ball, and some of the things that has to happen for it to be successful. Again, here we are with the ball in the wide part of the attacking third of the field, and you can see that this through ball, or this, I'm sorry, the ball centrally is really closed off. And we'll just say it looks something like this. The fullback has to realize that this, is, this area is closed, and the trigger comes that they see the nine start to run, either by putting his hand up or potentially by seeing the movement of the nine kind of coming down closer here and then triggering this ball in. So they have to read that trigger. And, and, and this is a difficult concept for U9, U10. So this isn't something I would I would really focus a ton on, but if you can start making these balls happen, they're incredible 
incredibly effective. So if this trigger is red and the ball's played in here and the nine comes down to get it, the defenders are going to immediately close. And more than likely what will happen is you're going to get into a situation where the nine is wide and probably doesn't have a shot. Now, if they slip in and they can get all the way to the goalkeeper and they can play 1v1 or 1v0, I should say, or 1v1 with the goalkeeper, you should definitely do that. More than likely what will ha happen is they'll get closed off and you, again, you're going to run into another crossing situation, okay? Because I don't like to complicate things, the crosses remain the same. The mid center midfielder goes to the penalty spot and the fullback on the opposite side comes far post. Now, you're not going to have have a near post runner in this situation and that's okay. Uh, what I typically tell uh, the fullback to do and again this is an advanced concept is to try to cinch in here and, and be an option around around what we call um, zone 14. Try to be an option around here because sometimes this will get closed off and then you'll be able to play it in here. But even if even if that fullback just 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 stays here I, I'm okay with that. That, that. That's that's not a big deal. And you again you end up with another crossing situation just you're not going to have a near post runner. We're going to put the ball again back in the wide area with our fullback and we talked about the first look being central the second look being this through ball in to our nine this kind of dangerous through ball in here the third look that we talked about is simply switching field so all that is is, is recognition that it just isn't on and th this can be very difficult for young players and even older players I should say understanding that all the space is over here and if we can get the ball all the way over to the opposite fullback quicker than these guys can recover we again end up with a crossing situation just on the other side so that's going to be the same situation crossing that we just talked about where the striker goes near post, the central midfielder goes to the penalty spot, and the fullback who started the switch has to get down to the far post. The only other look that we talked about was a 1v1 situation over here. And that again just is almost the same situation as when we played it centrally and then we played it back out wide. If for whatever reason this 1v1 is won by us, we're just going to get ourselves again into a situation to cross to dedicated runners. And it's really important that you teach that these dedicated runs happen and that the fullback actually tries to play a ball near post, far post, or to the penalty spot. Now let's talk about if the ball becomes central in the attacking part of the field. So I like to go from build out as it just gives us a place to start. So ball comes out to our right center back and the nine starts to press. Fullback comes down, six comes over, goalkeeper supports, fullback and center back on the opposite side start cinching in, the defenders start to come, the ball is played out here to fullback on the right side. And again, we encourage them to take their space and go forward. And as they go forward, the center back should support, the nine's coming, our nine needs to get up, their six comes over here, we see defenders starting to come, vendors starting to come they're starting to cinch over our six comes here our fullback again wants to stay about level with the ball on that side center back needs to cinch into this area here and the fullback is going to take their space here until they become engaged now here they become engaged a little bit earlier than before. So the ball's still really in the middle third of the field and they become engaged. And they've got several options here, but let's just say, because we're talking about what happens if the ball's in the middle third of the field, they find our central midfielder here in a good attacking position to get into our attacking third. So the first look here, the very first look that our center midfielder needs to, to do is to slip a ball here into the nine. So this is a really dangerous option if the nine has found himself in space, either between the center backs or just away from the center back. If this ball gets slipped in here, it's a 1v1 with the goalie. That's absolutely the first look. If that's closed off, and let's say you have our center back here, the second look is to just go yourself. So if the six has got them, if their six has got themselves caught up all the way over here, you can just take your space and go because now the center backs here is going to have to make a decision. Do they either come and then you can slip it or do they stay? And if they stay, we can just go all the way here until they decide to eventually come over. And then again, you have a 2v1 here to go. If the team has recovered a little bit uh, or if the six is a little bit closer here. So if, if this kind of gets cut off and it looks a little bit more like this, the dangerous area is to be played to the opposite side of the attacking third. So in this situation, we will want our fullback to come out through here and we'd want to switch it through our central midfielder. So play a ball deep into here. So now the ball was central, it can be played wide, and now we have the ball wide in our attacking third, which we've already talked about, and this is very likely gonna be another crossing situation. So just to recap, if the ball is central in our attacking third of the field, the first look is a combination with our central midfielder and our striker. So if the ball can be played 
through the center backs into our striker's feet and we can go to goal, we're going to want to do that. If that's not on, the other option would be to play it, of course, to the nine, but they hold up play like we talked about before and it goes out wide or take it yourself. So if they have space, we always encourage them to drive forward. Maybe they take the, take it themselves. And I, I don't even hear a 1v1 with the center back would be fine. If that's not on, another great option is to just play the ball out the other side to the other fullback, who again is now wide and we'll have a crossing situation that we just talked about. So I hope this video helps your team score goals and create chances out of the 2-3-1 formation at 7v7. If you like this video, check out that one.